Hello there, friends and neighbors. Thank you for coming back to my channel. This is me, Stella Hendricks. All right, we are gonna jump right in to part 12, chapter 12 of The Girl in the Centerfold by Surrey Marsh. Again, we will not be reading everything, just excerpts, and these are all my opinions. I really strongly encourage you to buy this book, read it, and uh, form opinions of your own. Uh, so this will be a pretty quick one today. It's a short chapter and we are almost done. Then we can start our new book. Okay. <clears throat> chapter 12, Louis. You're not going to like Louis very much. <laughs> I'm not even sure I like Louis very much. You see, Louis was a gangster. I didn't know that at the time. Louis never discussed his vocation with me, but looking back on it, I have to admit it was there for me to know. I should have guessed all those guys around him treating him with great deference. Sure, Louis, whatever you say, Louis. Clearly he was the boss of something and I, as his girl, shared in that respect and lavished on, respect lavished on him. If I reached for a cigarette, three packs and four lighted matches magically appeared. Well, at least one of each. When I walked into the room, everyone arose. The most comfortable chair was immediately available. I was obviously, um, it was obviously a mortal sin for an empty glass to grace my hand. In conversation, which was also instantly available, I was usually Miss Marsh. It was nice. What 19 year old girl isn't going to like such treatment? I knew I should have suspected something. In hindsight, I guess I should have peeked into a few drawers or paid more attention to conversations. At the very least, I should have asked, say Louie, what do you do to have all of this money? But I never did, and he probably would have lied, and I probably would have believed him because I guess I didn't want to know what he did. It all came out later when Louis went to prison, 15 years, some kind of dope charge. Shit. That'll do it. Can you imagine what it was like? First class hotels, the best service, wonderful food, champagne, floor shows, everything. He was marvelous. He'd show me each city, sightseeing, window shopping, night clubbing. He'd try to show he'd show he'd try to show me all the best places and introduce me to people and advise me. The steaks were good here. Try the house drink there. It was delicious. I had three and got high. Don't play the slots, they're for suckers. Craps afford the best chance. He taught me how to play craps and I lost fifty dollars. He thought it hilarious. Promise me you'll never become a professional gambler, he said. The rest, may, the rest of the stay in Vegas, I knew I was known as Craps Marsh. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, so. Suddenly the whole thing was terribly funny, hilariously funny. Pompeo Posar, now the blouse please off. The aching from back from the bunny costume. Alexis Erba and his hours, days, weeks of taking one picture. Hugh Hefner, pipe in hand, making his grand entrance, and Hugh Hefner in his Japanese pajamas, the 35 leering businessman from New Jersey. I laughed. Oh, how I laughed. Tears ran down my cheeks. My sides ached. And every time Louis asked me what I was laughing at, I laughed harder. What are you laughing at? Finally, I was able to answer him. Louis, I said, it's too damn bad. I don't love you. So that's the end of the chapter entitled Louie. Okay, so there's a lot more in this chapter that I skipped over because this chapter <laughs> is a very, there's a lot of sexiness in this uh, chapter. It's a very descriptive chapter. And honestly, I liked it. I thought it was really well written. Um, I think it does contribute to the story. I think it makes her seem more human. I really like it. But I still just have that weird feeling like a person who felt manipulated into posing could be manipulated into writing this book and someone who is so private as to feel ashamed about having like Playboy pictures out there would surely feel ashamed of having such graphic sexual descriptions of interactions with their partners. I don't know. I just felt kind of strange about it. So I'm not going to be reading it out loud. Although I do think it is well written. You know, I kind of have to add that in there as well. Uh, so this reminds me of a uh, casino or uh, Goodfellas. I love 
Mafia movies, I love the mob stuff, La Cosa Nostra, documentaries, yes, I'm here for it, I love it. I love cults in general, I find them absolutely fascinating. I think it comes from the Mormon background, just interesting, interesting stuff. Yeah, conspiracies of people, you know, doing things. And uh, how she talks about how um, uh, Karen, in the beginning of Goodfellas, she talks about how her husband had or she was dating this guy and he was so young but he had so much respect and he knew everybody and he had all of this influence and power and she didn't really know but looking back like she kind of knew but she didn't want to know and I think that's very interesting. I think a lot of uh, mob wives talk that way uh, during and after. Also it reminds me a ton of Virginia Hill. Uh, Virginia Hill is actually who the flamingo is named after. Uh, the Flamingo was built by Bugsy Siegel back in the 60s, back in the ye olden Las Vegas days. And um, he got a big loan from the mob to make this big casino, and he did. And it was called the Flamingo, and every day he built it, it was going over budget more and more. Oh, and it was called the Flamingo after his girlfriend because that was his nickname for her uh, because she was a redhead and she had long legs. Flamingo. So every time... Uh, you drive past the Flamingo, now you can think about Virginia Hill, one of the coolest mob malls of all time. Uh, she's definitely one of my starlets and harlots. I'm definitely going to be doing a biography, bi biography video about her at some point. I'm not sure exactly when, but it's going to be great. Also, I'm obsessed with Las Vegas. So anything about Las Vegas, I go crazy for. And that's so funny that we talk about that in today's chapter. Oh, dang it. Oh, it's over there. Oh, well, because that book that we're going to review next the showgirl next door is essentially that when Holly goes to Las Vegas and she learns like all the best restaurants and venues and all the cool adventures she has there. It's kind of like a book of that chapter only by Holly Madison. So it's going to be cool. So uh, we have but one more chapter, no two more chapters to finish and then we are going to start right on that. Is it actually just one more chapter? Nope, nope, just two chapters, two more chapters. And then we'll start on the new book. Thank you so much, friends and neighbors. I'll catch you on the flip side.